Howdy, folks. I'm Ginger Brian. I'm Ginger Cat Amber. <laughs> Ginger Cat, yes. And, uh, how's life treating you? I also have teacup kittens on my dress. She can't really does. See them, but... Maybe we'll show them to you at the end. And there yeah. is an interesting story behind them. I guess my ears have really collapsed together. <laughs> my head must be very small. I have a very small and pointy head. <laughs> Oh my, it's just like cutting into my forehead. It's pain. The existence is pain. Let's get started. Oh, there they go. Am I a jerk for not getting my friend a $200 gift and making her feel unloved? Aww. I'm a 28-year-old male and my friend, a 27-year-old female, is usually a very kind person. But we recently got into a stupid argument and I wanted to post it here. My friend is obsessed with the five love languages. She always asks people what their love language is and she does her best to show love by using your love language. She says that her love language is receiving gifts. So everyone should put a lot of thought into her gifts. I thought I put a good amount of thought into her gift. She likes this one brand of artisan coffee from a local shop, so I bought her a big bag of that coffee from the store and a nice mug to go with it. It costs about $45 in total. We did our gift exchange one week ago, and she seemed disappointed when she opened her gift. I asked her what was wrong, and she asked how much I spent on this gift. I told her the price, and she said that she expected a nicer gift. Preferably around 200 bucks. That's more money than I spend on, like, on my Christmas list. She said that my cheap gift meant that she felt unloved because receiving gifts is her love language. Uh, that admittedly made me mad and I called her selfish and materialistic and took the coffee and mug from her. I figured that she didn't want it. She shouldn't have it. I left without opening my gift and now we haven't spoken in days. Am I the jerk? She clearly thinks I am, but I think that she's more of the jerk in this situation. Yeah, I'm going to say that OP is not the jerk and the friend is. You know what I think here? I think her love language is expensive things. Right, the thing is, like, if your love language is receiving gifts, then it's the thought that matters, not the price tag. The fact that she explicitly asked, like, what was the price point for this? Like, yeah. you can yeah. give someone a really, like, thoughtful gift. Like, think about all the handmade gifts that you can oh, make for people. Course, that yeah. may cost very little to make, uh, uh, but they but cost the a lot time. of time and energy. Like, so yeah. the price point may be low, but the time and energy... Like, it sounds like she wouldn't want that either. It sounds no. like she just wants, you need to spend $200 on me. And that's not an indication of her love language. That's an indication of, I want nice things and I'm going to use this love language stuff as an excuse yeah, to demand yeah. them. It seems like an excuse. It seems like an excuse that she's using to get people to get her more expensive things than what they would normally get. Yeah. And then being like, you're cheap because you didn't give me... It doesn't even sound like they're in a relationship. Right, they're just, you know, in a friend group or something. And it's they're like, like... Who's... That's a lot of money to spend on a friend. Maybe that's just me speaking. Like, how much do you spend on your friends, folks? Let me know in the comments below. I'm curious. Curious, do you spend two hundred dollars on any of your friends? I mean, again, I don't spend two hundred dollars on anyone on my Christmas list, so. I mean, yeah, like if you were to spend two hundred dollars on every single person on your Christmas list, I mean, I can't imagine that it would uh, uh, go very well. That's a lot of money. Our next story is: Am I the jerk for not allowing my ex-husband's girlfriend to wear my wedding dress? Yes, it's as bad as it sounds. Yeah, I, I was about to say that. That was my line, Amber. <laughs> that was supposed to be my line. Oops. <laughs> I'm a 35-year-old female, and I've been divorced from my 41-year-old male husband for three years. We have a five-year-old son together. My ex, we'll call him K, started dating another woman, we'll call her G. K and I have a great relationship with each other. We still love each other as friends. K started dating G about 10 months ago. G and I have become really great friends and enjoy being around each other. Everything seemed to be going great until the other day. G and K have started talking about marriage. I know K is really hesitant, but G really wants to be married and have children of her own. I guess G saw some old pictures of me in my wedding dress and has been raving about how pretty my dress is. 
The other day we had coffee together and G brought up getting married soon. I told her how happy I was for her. Things change though when she's asked if she could wear my wedding dress. I was really shocked she even asked. I immediately told her that I was flattered, but no. She immediately got extremely pouty and started to ask why. I explained that I just wasn't comfortable with her wearing my dress to marry my ex-husband. She got really upset and started to cause a scene. I walked out knowing that she was not going to calm down. About an hour later, my ex-husband called me asking what happened. When I told him, he completely understood and was on my side, but it didn't end there. G has been having her friends and family call me and my work calling me a jerk for not sharing. G is claiming that I'm not over K and that I'm just doing this to ruin her wedding. While it's true that I'm not over K, part of me just doesn't feel comfortable having her wear my dress. This whole argument has really put a strain on my ex's and I's relationship and the relationship around my son. Part of me feels like I should give in, but I still just don't feel comfortable with it. So am I the jerk for not letting her wear my dress? Edit to add, G told her friends and family that I offered to let her use the dress, but then backed out because I was jealous. Jelly. Just so jelly. Like. This whole situation is a train wreck. It is. Like. <laughs> I'm not over my ex-husband. I have a great relationship with him. I know that he's dating another woman. This woman now wants to become me. <laughs> yeah. So like, there's just so much going on here. And like, okay, first of all. I uh, know you're not the jerk for denying that request. Like, you don't have to let anyone wear your wedding dress. And this is especially kind of weird. Yeah. Um, and so you're totally within your right to deny her that. There's no question there. Now, the person who needs to step up is Kay. Like, he, well, it does sound like he did a little bit. Well, but it sounds like he hasn't said anything to her friends and family to clarify that OP never offered the dress. Yeah, like, yeah. He needs, it's incumbent upon him to say, no, G is lying. There was no offer. And, uh. Well, oh, I think he just needs to be like, listen, cut this nonsense out or we're not getting married. Oh, I guess. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> like, he like, just needs, I just, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. He just needs to squash this somehow. Just be like, listen, tell your friends and family. To leave my ex alone, you're not getting the wedding dress. Yeah, like, so he needs to squash it. OP probably needs to... And how would he feel about this? I know, like, it's just, it seems so weird, like, the idea of, like, oh, you're getting married again to, like, someone in the same dress, like... Is it... Deja vu. Deja yeah. vu. Like, I just cannot imagine being comfortable. I can't, I, I don't know that she ran this by him. It was like, it sounds like she didn't because he, like, he was confused when he called OP about what happened. And she explained, he's like, oh, yeah, I get that. So, yeah, uh, yeah, I just don't, I don't know. I like, I think that this, there's writing on the wall here that this is not, we're in for a, we're in for a bad time ahead. <laughs> yes, yes we are. I do th I think also though that it may be time for Opie to take like I know she has to co-parent with her ex, but maybe like reevaluate the other things because it sounds like she's letting her continued feelings for Kay like maybe put put up with things and yeah, whatnot to yeah. try and stay like she doesn't want to give up on this like best friendship that she thinks she has. And, yeah, like, it really seems like she's trying to like mend the pieces of her reality by trying to be like oh well i'm being gonna be friendly with all these people and i'm gonna be like cool with this she's clearly not cool with this right, right. She, she does not like she's upset i i would imagine that there's sort of something inside of her right here that says that she's not happy that he's getting married yeah like if she's not over him she doesn't want to see him get married for sure but also, like, this might be a bit of an unhealthy relationship with K and G and the whole thing where she's just kind of tolerating, like, being run over a little bit. <laughs> yeah, so, like, it is important to maintain a harmonious co-parenting relationship, mm -hmm. but maybe take some time to step back from hanging out with them outside of that and yeah. uh, maybe talk to a therapist to process these complicated feelings. Yeah. But you're 100% within your right to not give her the dress. Keep that dress. Do not let her. Our next letter is titled, Am I a jerk for arranging my wife's parents to spend Christmas celebration with us without telling her? All right, folks, you can already see the tag here. 
we can already guess what's going yeah. to go down. I'm a 27 year old male and I've been married to my wife, a 26 year old female for two years and we are expecting a baby boy together. My wife has been no contact with her parents because of issues that occurred between them during her teenage years. She said it was because the way they treated her late boyfriend and their seven year old son. She stopped seeing them after she moved out with my stepson, but she went back to introduce me and things were fine till a little before the marriage. My wife went no contact after she claimed my mother-in-law stole all of her wedding jewelry and sold it. Now I'm not sure if this was accurate or just an excuse my wife used to get me to stop asking. <laughs> I don't trust my wife to tell me the truth. Yeah. <laughs> A few months ago, my mother-in-law, as well as other family members, reached out to me and we had a conversation without my wife about how innocent my mother-in-law was and how she was falsely accused by my wife to get back at her for past issues. I really felt like she was sincere, especially after she wished that my wife would give her another chance. So I love, I love how, I, I want to pause here. I love how. He's like, oh, yeah, this sound, this makes so much sense. I'm going to believe these people who I don't even know over my own wife. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to take their word over my wife's word because clearly they're the more trustworthy individuals here. She's just my wife. I only trust her with my money. <laughs> <laughs> I had an idea, which was that I invite my in-laws over to celebrate Christmas with me and my wife and hopefully talk things out once and for all because that's always a good idea yeah. <laughs> throwing people into a situation backed into a corner without them knowing it is the best way to resolve conflict <laughs> i didn't tell my wife because i didn't want her stressing over the gathering but days ago i came home and she's been yelling at me asking what i was thinking by inviting her bullies and enemies to our christmas celebration i tried to explain that her parents are very sincere and wanting to start new with the baby coming but she yelled that she didn't even treat my stepson or his father very well and they don't deserve to be near the kids and i said that i needed to cancel immediately I suggested that she calm down. <laughs> calm down? Why are you so angry? <laughs> First, and we'll talk about it, but she refused and packed her stuff and went to stay with a friend, repeatedly saying that I disrespected her and ignored her decision when it came to her family. I spoke to her friend and said maybe my wife should uh, let bygones be bygones, and yes, maybe she's dealing with stress and is lashing out for no reason, but her friend said that I overstepped, and it wasn't my business to try and fix whatever issue that she had with her family and told me to back down and cancel the invite since my wife said that she won't be there. But I think she is holding on to grudges and being bitter instead of settling things with her family. Am I a completely clueless individual who's just naive or a jerk or yeah. both? At a minimum, a jerk. I don't know how... I, yeah, maybe OP has been bamboozled a little bit, but like his whole attitude around his wife is very problematic. My my wife just doesn't know better. She's a she just doesn't know how to tell the truth about what happened in her past, and she's just holding on to these grudges. Right, like okay, so she has a seven year old son, and her parents do not treat her son well. Yeah, they may want to have a relationship with the new baby, and we are trying to mend fences for that. But if they're not going to treat the seven-year-old well, like, they cannot be in your life. Like, the end of story. And OP, like, that really concerns me because she literally says, like, they don't even treat my son well. And he hasn't seen me. Well, they want to mend fences. No, they don't. They want access to the new, the new baby. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, and, like, why does he assume that his wife is the one who's lying over these right. people he doesn't even know? Because there's lots of them. Like they, they. It sounds like they, they, there are many of them, and his wife is one person, and they've kind of like come up with this story. Oh, she just, she just framed her mother. <laughs> like, like that's a really big thing to lie about. It right? is, and I just don't understand for the life of me why he would just immediately jump onto their boat and be like, oh yeah, clearly my wife just has no idea what's going on and she's just holding onto grudges and she's just being unreasonable. And now even like, even after she's like, been like, look, 
I'm not going to be here and uh, I don't want to see these people cancel or I'm not going to be around. He still is so clueless about the situation. He's like, well, maybe she's just holding on to grudges. Well, and the thing is, if she wants to hold on to grudges, that's her prerogative. Like, this is not your, like, take a cue from a friend. This is not your place mm -hmm. to mend this relationship. There's a lot probably going on behind the scenes that you don't understand. Uh, oh, well, Amber, it's such a simple, clean situation. <laughs> like, of course, her family is going to give you one very skewed piece of the puzzle. She probably also, I mean, everyone's views are colored by their own experiences. So no one is going to tell you, you know, the full and objective truth because there yeah. is no yeah. full and objective truth. But very clearly, her parents have hurt her deeply. And uh, she tried to mend fences with them, but then her mom <laughs> stole her jewelry and sold it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, she tried. She really did try, it sounds like. But this sounds like just a bad situation, a toxic situation at home. And he just needs to not push her into this. Our next story is, am I the jerk for being an ungrateful spoiled brat for the Christmas gift my husband got me? I'm a 35 year old female and I want to begin by saying that in every holiday, me and my husband, a 33 year old male, we both work decent jobs, set separate budgets for gifts. He uses his own money to buy gifts and I do the same. We've been married for almost a year together for three. This is our first Christmas as a married couple. He made a list of every person he wanted to buy a gift for. I stumbled upon this list by accident and, out of curiosity, decided to take a look. I found out that his friends and co-workers were on the top of his list with gifts that cost over $5,000 total. For example, he got a $600 wristwatch for his co-worker, a $250 bracelet for his sister-in-law, and $900 workout gear for his friend. There was more, but that's all I could remember. What made me upset was that when I got to my name, I saw that he bought me a $20 kitchen spoon set, stainless steel. I was too shocked to ignore this, and I had a confrontation with him about it. He argued that A, it's his money, and he's the one paying, so I should not control that, and B, his coworkers slash friends are important to him, and he's known them for ages. Uh, that says something about how important he thinks you are. Uh, C. He said the gift should be appreciated no matter what it costs. I argued that he was disrespecting me and dismissing my feelings with the gift he chose to get me. Not to mention that I spend a lot of money on gifts to buy him, his favorite shoe slash gaming brands. But he got upset and said I was acting like an ungrateful, spoiled brat and urged me to get rid of this attitude and accept what I'm getting. The argument got worse and we stopped talking to each other. He still says I'm being ridiculous with my overreaction and should stop. Did I overreact? All right, okay, here's what you do. Just return all his gifts and get him a $20, like, something generic, like... A vacuum cleaner. Yeah. Dirt well, devil. Those are more expensive. So you want to, like... A yard sale vacuum cleaner. Yeah, exactly. Spend the same amount he spent on your gift and make it as generic as a kitchen spoon set and see how he feels about that. So I'm a little incredulous on this one. Um, I mean, I think I, I, I have, well, for one, this is a lot of money he's spending on in other individuals. So back to my question at the very beginning of here is, does anyone actually spend this much money, uh, <laughs> much money on gifts on people? I guess if they're both in really good, high paying jobs, then yeah, she says we both work decent jobs. I don't know what that means, but yeah. if they make a lot of money, then it may not be an issue. Because five thousand dollars is a huge chunk of money. So if they're making like, I don't know, if they're making fifty thousand dollars a year each, then uh, that's still a huge chunk of money to spend on people. And I mean, I guess it depends what they mean by decent. If they were like, oh well, we make you know, three hundred thousand dollars each, then that's I guess not that much money, but, um, I don't know. Like, I think like if I were to leave a list out that someone would stumble upon, I would write fake prices down just to mess with someone because of snooping. <laughs> so I don't know. What do you think? I mean, I'm just going to take the, I always take the letters as though they, I, I know that there are fake posts on Reddit, but I always mm -hmm. treat them as though they're real and I give my advice as though they're real. So, well, what I'm saying is like, if I were to do something like this, I wouldn't be writing down the right real prices of things and real, real gifts I was getting for people. Yeah. Well, but like, what's the point in te like to test and like, oh, your partner is going to be unhappy with a $20 kitchen spoon set. Like, of course they are. Like, 
I, I don't see what the end... Uh, okay, you've proved that, like, they'll be upset if you uh, spend so much more money on everyone else uh, than on them, like... Oh, just to, just to turn the screws, that's all. Oh, well, that, that wouldn't be very nice. Uh, and so, yeah, I think OP is not in the wrong here. I think that uh, it was... If this is legit, it's yeah, very yeah. inconsiderate I of mean, him. so I think, like, if he really has every intention on getting her a $20 gift and everyone else um like the it shouldn't be the price like i think that price is kind of uh subjective sometimes like if this was a 20 dollars spoon set and she's been begging for it for like you know months years then yeah i mean this might be a really great present to get for her if that's what she really wanted but if um you know he's giving less thought and I mean, you know a, a set of spoons is one of those kinds of things you don't get people for christmas it's the thing you grab at the dollar store because you forgot to pick up a gift for someone you're like oh that clearly they need like some spoons like who doesn't need more kitchen spoons yeah yeah it's a no thought no effort effort type of gift yeah it really seems like a zero effort kind of gift he went to a grocery store saw a pair of spoons was like we need some more spoons I'll get these for the wife. <laughs> yeah. And if that's his attitude, like, that's very uh, much not good. And you really need to rethink, like, is everything else in your relationship solid? Because, Two like... Two birds with one stone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it's, it, that's what it sounds like. It does, sounds like he doesn't really, really respect or care about you and your needs. Like, a workout gear set, like, I'm assuming his friend works out, so, like, there's thought that goes into that. And then jewelry, you know, lot, written wristwatches, those are things that people tend to mm -hmm. like. But kitchen spoons, like if I was OP, I would be, I would be very unhappy. I wouldn't care. I would be unhappy. I'd be like, <laughs> if, I, if Brian got me kitchen spoons and then he got uh, like uh, everyone else on his list, like I'm gonna buy your sister two hundred fifty dollar uh, bracelet. I might start questioning the, the relationship <laughs> dynamics at that point in time. Yeah. <laughs> Why is Brian getting my sister? uh two hundred dollars uh, uh <laughs> worth of workout gear and me a kitchen spoon <laughs> yeah so like i think rightly so you would question the relationship dynamics at that point in time i mean okay so a uh, list aside she come, goes to suppose she didn't even find this list and she wakes up christmas morning opens up her gift and gets a twenty dollar kitchen spoon what would he what would she, how would he expect her to react? Right. Like, he, he sounds like he expects her to be grateful no matter what. And he's going to open up his, you know, shoes, his new shoes and his gaming stuff. Mm -hmm. And like, oh, this is great. And he wants her to react the same way to this kitchen spoon. Oh, spoon. Which is why I say just take just... back his gifts and like. Well, I mean, at that point in time, what you do, OP, is you take the spoons and you shove them into the shoes. <laughs> and you, you're like. These shoes now have the spoons now have shoes, <laughs> and I don't know. And then, yeah, then you smash the gaming system. <laughs> don't smash anything. You just take it back, resell it. Smash everything. Do not smash things. It is a waste of money, and it is uh, burn it all the to the ground. And we don't need to be smashing and burning things to the ground. Uh, but maybe rethink the marriage if if there are other signs that he doesn't really care about you. So, yeah. All right, folks, that's all the time we have for today. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, consider giving us a like. Thanks to Amber for joining me. Thank you for having me. Happy Tuesday. Yes. <laughs> I guess we're going to announce all the days this week, except for yesterday. Mondays don't get announcements. Well, I mean, they're <laughs> Mondays, so. Everybody loves Mondays. No. <laughs> that's not what Garfield says. <laughs> So, uh, back, we uh, we promised that we would tell you about Amber's uh, dress here. So, why don't yeah. you show them the dress here? In the ball room, as you can see, they get adorable little faces. All right. So, yeah, they're just these adorable little rainbow teacup kittens with these cute little faces. And, uh, Brian designed them all. Yeah, I actually uh, did the graphics on those. So, uh, they, uh, that took some time, and I think that it really came out really nicely here. Yeah, I have the dress in blue and also in black, so it's really pretty cool. Well, maybe I'll send you a picture to add to the end of the video of the black one. Yeah, we can send that. So I'll show you a picture of her with the black one on. I guess we'll see you all uh, tomorrow then. Bye. Bye.